Hi, welcome to this video module on plate boundaries. My name is Solmaz Mohajer. I'm from the University of Tübingen in Germany. Today we are going to talk about plate boundaries and why they're so cool. A lot of stuff happened on plate boundaries and today you're going to discover what happens. But before we do that, I'd like to ask you a question. Here's a piece of rock. If I give this piece of rock to you, how would you go about finding out what type of rock this is? Well, as a geologist, we always observe and try to find what is on the rock. So here, I take a look at the rock, I look for crystals, and here there's no crystal that's visible to my eye. Then I feel it, it's very grainy. Even some of the grains come off. Then I look more carefully and I see some layers here. Using all of this information, I would say that this belongs to the category of sedimentary rocks. And I know that because sedimentary rocks generally have structures like layering in them. And generally, they don't show crystals like igneous or metamorphic rocks. Now, this rock, I think, is a sandstone. So what I just did was to observe what's on the rock, then I described my observation, then I classified them to figure out what type of rock this is. A sedimentary rock, that's the classification, and more specifically, this is a sandstone. Now, can you think of situations where you have to observe, describe, and classify things? Well, take a few minutes and discuss this among yourselves, and we'll come back to see how you did. Welcome back. How did you do? Were you able to think of some examples of where you observe, describe, and classify things? Well, you might wonder why I'm asking you to think about these three things, observe, describe, and classify. These are the th three things that scientists do with scientific data or scientific information. They try to observe, then describe their observation, and then, based on their description of the observations, classify scientific information. A lot of discoveries in science have included these three steps. Now, today you are going to be the scientists. You are going to observe, describe, and classify scientific information related to plate boundaries. Now, you may ask, what are plate boundaries? The Earth's upper layer, the crust of the Earth, is broken into plates. These are called tectonic plates. When these plates come into contact with each other, we have plate boundaries. Now, these plate boundaries are really interesting because many cool things actually happen near or on the plate boundaries. Today, you are going to discover what's going to happen on the plate boundaries. And you will do that by observing, describing and classifying scientific information. Now, in a minute, your teacher is going to break you into groups. And each group is going to have one scientific expertise associated with it. We have four groups. The seismology group, the volcanology group, the group of geographers, and the group of geochronologists. Now, you will get a map in your group. This map, for instance, is the map that shows the distribution of earthquakes globally. So the seismology group, or the earthquake group, will get a map like this. Similarly, the volcanology group will get a map like this. Now this map shows the distribution of volcanoes globally. Now let's take a look at what the geochronology group gets. They get a very colorful map like this. And this map shows the age of seafloor in millions of years. How cool that is. And lastly, the geography group will get a map like this. This map shows the distribution of topography globally. Now, you're going to get into your groups and take a look at the map that you have. For instance, the geographers are going to observe what they see on their geography map. Remember, you're only making observations. And to do that, take a look at the legend 
and there are some informations written on the side of the map. It will help you to be able to observe things better. Similarly with the other maps, make sure that you look at the legend and that, that you understand what each map really shows. Now you will also get a map like this. This is your plate boundary map. It shows you the locations of plate boundaries. These are the solid black lines that are shown here. Now as you look at your scientific map, for instance the earthquake map, I want you to pay special attention to the behavior of your scientific information, for instance the distribution of earthquakes near or at plate boundaries. And you will do this globally for the entire map. For instance, if you look at the plate boundary here, that's right in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, what kind of earthquakes do you see there? Do you see shallow earthquakes? Do you, do you see deep earthquakes? Make observations of your scientific data near or at plate boundary, and we will come back to see how you did. Welcome back. Now that we've had a chance to observe what is happening on your map, it's time to describe your observation and classify them. When you're trying to describe your observations, you can use words such as narrow or wide, active or inactive, symmetric or not symmetric, valley or ridge to describe your scientific data. Now I'll give you an example. Let's take a look at the earthquake map. This is the map that shows the distribution of earthquakes globally. Different colors here are used to represent earthquakes of different depths. So shallow earthquakes are shown in a certain color. Deep or intermediate earthquakes are shown also in different colors. Now grab your plate boundary map and take a look at your scientific data, for instance the distribution of earthquakes globally at or near plate boundaries. For instance, do you see deep earthquakes associated with certain plate boundaries on this map? Or do you see shallow earthquakes associated with certain boundaries? Then what you do after describing your data, you're going to classify your data. You will use a classification like this. We are going to classify the information into, three, into five different categories type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4, and type 5. Now, for instance, the type 1 category for your plate boundary using the earthquake map would be all the plate boundaries that are associated with deep earthquakes. You assign a color to that boundary. Then you return to your plate boundary map and color all the boundaries that fit the description of your type 1 plate boundary. So if your type 1 is for deep earthquakes, where do you see deep earthquakes in your earthquake map? Then return to your plate boundary map, use a color pencil and color those boundaries where you see deep earthquakes. You will do the same thing for type 2, type 3, type 4 and type 5. So just to wrap this up really quickly, in the previous section you observe your scientific data. Now you're, what you're doing is you're describing what you've seen. The describing part is your description for each type of plate boundary. Then you're classifying your description into five different types. At the end, you will end up with your plate boundary map, hopefully colored everywhere along the boundaries. Now hold on to this map because we're gonna return to it for the part two of this lesson. Good luck. Welcome back. This is a part two of the plate boundary lesson. So in this part of the lesson, your teacher is going to give you a plate name. And based on that plate name, you're going to break into groups. Now, these are different groups than what you had before. 
The difference is that instead of having all the earthquake scientists or seismologists in one group, or similarly volcanologists in one group, we are going to grab one person from each group and put them into a new group. In other words, every group that we form based on the plate name that we've been given contains one seismologist, one volcanologist, one geographer, and one geochronologist. Once you get into your group, remember that each one of you is an expert in one type of scientific data. For instance, the seismologists know the distribution of earthquakes around the world. Know that the volcanologists, the geographers, or the geochronologists know very little to almost nothing about the distribution of earthquakes globally because they didn't take a look at the earthquake map. So your job as a seismologist is to give them a brief description of your scientific data globally. You can use the map that you had from the previous activity, talk about the distribution of earthquakes around the world. You can even show them the plate boundary types that you have come up with and your colored map that shows the location of different plate boundary types. Once you have done that, allow everyone else in the group to talk about their scientific data as well. Volcanologists will do the same thing. Geochronologists will also talk about the distribution of the age of the seafloor around the world. Similarly, geographers will talk about the distribution of elevation or topography around the world. Once you're all familiar with all four different types of scientific data, what you're going to do is to zoom in on your plate. First, take a look at your plate boundary map. Find the location of your plate. The name of the plates are written on this map, so it's very easy for you to figure out where your plate is. Then look at the edges of your plate. These are the, all the boundaries around your plate. I'll give you an example. So as you can see, here's the African plate. The boundaries that you're interested in are everything that is around Africa. These are all the plate boundaries associated with your plate group. Now, what you're going to zoom in and focus on is the distribution of scientific data on your plate. Returning to the Africa plate, you can look at the distribution of earthquakes. You can take a look at the distribution of volcanoes. You can take a look at topography associated with the boundaries of your African plate and also the age of the seafloor. Now, all groups will do this with their plate boundary map. Now, just like the previous segment of this video, what you're doing in this segment is to observe only, right? So you look at the distribution of scientific data and you observe what you notice at the boundaries of your assigned plate. Give this a go and we'll come back to see how you did. Welcome back. How did you do? I hope every person or every special scientist in your group got a chance to talk about their scientific data associated with the plate group. Now, what you're going to do is to describe and classify your scientific information for the assigned plate. You're going to come up with a new classification scheme for the plate boundaries associated with your plate. You're going to come up with four different types of plate boundaries, and you can call them type A, type B, type C, and type D. And just like the previous activity, you can assign different colors to each type. Now you want to make sure that you include a very good description for each type. You're going, for instance, to take a look at the distribution of earthquakes associated with, with one part of your plate boundary, and then use the same part of the plate boundary and look at the distribution of volcanoes. How is the topography on that part of the plate boundary? How is the age of the ocean floor associated with the same part of the plate boundary? Now you will do this for the entire plate boundaries associated with your plate. Now I'll give you an example. For instance, 
your type A plate boundary could have a description that includes something like this. It's associated with deep earthquakes, high elevation, perhaps some volcanoes, and young age for the ocean floor. That would be the description for type A. And you will do the same thing for type B, type C, and type D. Remember, you're not doing this for the entire globe. You're only focusing on your plate name and on the boundaries associated with your plate. So to finish this activity, then you will grab your map, you will Put your classification scheme in the back of the map, something similar to this. This would be the legend of your map. And then you return to the map, use the same legend and the colors, and color the plate boundaries associated with your plate based on the classifications that you've given. Now go ahead and do this, and I'll come back to see how you did. One last thing, please select the spokesperson for your group. This person will give a one to two minute presentation to the rest of the class about the boundaries associated with your plate and the distribution of all scientific data associated with that plate. Welcome back. How did your presentation go? I hope you were able to give a good tour of your plate. Now in the next part, your teacher is going to give you a handout. Your handout is going to have a couple of terms on it that you may not be familiar with, but don't worry about them because we will learn about them very shortly. There are three different types of plate boundaries. Convergent, divergent, and transform. Now you notice that I put two types for convergent. The first one is called convergent subducting. The other one is called convergent continent continent. Again, don't worry about these names too much. What you need to pay attention to is the description for each plate boundary type. You are familiar with this description because you've already done that for your plate. So let's take a look at the convergent subducting plate boundary. Now, if you look at all the scientific maps associated with this type of plate boundary, you will notice that convergent subducting plates are associated with volcanoes parallel to the plate boundary. They are also associated with shallow earthquakes on both sides of the plate boundary. You might see deep earthquakes only on one side and high topography, high mountains. You will also see young seafloor associated with this type of plate boundary. Now in your handout, you will also see descriptions for convergent, continent, continent, divergent, and transform. Now read these descriptions very carefully. Then return to your plate boundary map. Take a look at your plate, zoom in there, and you're gonna look at this description and try to find out what type of plate boundary is associated with your plate. Does the description of your plate fit what is written here for convergent subducting? Or perhaps for convergent continent continent? Or maybe divergent or transform? Or a combination of all? So take a minute, do this, and we'll come back to see how you did. Welcome back. I hope you were able to discover what type of plate boundaries are associated with your plate. Was it convergent, divergent, transform, or a combination of these? Now, let's take a look at each plate boundary type. Let's start with convergent plate boundary. Convergent plate boundary is where plate boundaries are actually coming into contact and are colliding. So you have one plate and another plate coming together they are of the same density and when they collide, they will form topography or high mountains. 
Now, if there's a difference in density between these two plates, for instance, if instead of having two continents or two continental plates coming together, we have one continental plate and one oceanic plate, they're of different densities. The oceanic plate is heavier than the continental plate. So when they collide, instead of building mountains, the heavier plate is going to subduct or sink underneath the other plate. In this case, the oceanic plate is going to subduct under the continental plate. Now, this is demonstrated here. As two plates come together, if you have one oceanic plate and one continental plate, the oceanic plate will subduct underneath the continental plate. Subducting convergent plate boundary. Now, the other plate boundary that was also convergent was called continent-continent convergent. Well, we just talked about that. These are where, when two continents come together and they form mountains. The next type of plate boundary is divergent plate boundary. In divergent plate boundary, two plates are diverging from each other. This means that they're moving away from each other. And lastly, the third type of plate boundary is called transform plate boundary. You will see a diagram of it here. In this type of plate boundary, the two plates are moving past one another. So instead of converging or diverging, they're moving past one another. Now, as you have discovered, each boundary type is associated with particular observable phenomena. In convergent plate boundaries, whether it's continent, continent, or subducting plate boundaries, we see earthquakes. We see shallow earthquakes. We also see intermediate to deep earthquakes. We also see volcanoes at these boundaries, particularly at subducting convergent plate boundaries. At these boundaries, we also build mountains, so we have high topography associated with them. The age of the ocean floor is young at these boundaries. Now, at divergent plate boundaries, we also see earthquakes, but we see generally shallow earthquakes. At these boundaries, we see some volcanoes. We also notice that the age of the ocean floor is very young. This is in fact where the new oceanic crust is being formed. In terms of topography, we see slight elevation at divergent plate boundaries. At transform plate boundaries, we see earthquakes. But because these plates move past one another, neither topography nor new ocean crust are being produced. Now, today you discovered different types of plate boundaries by observing, describing, and classifying scientific information. Scientists also learned about different types of plate boundaries by the same types of data that you looked at today. It was the distribution of earthquakes, volcanoes, topography, and most importantly, the age of the ocean floor that led them to the discovery of plate boundaries. You learned about three different types of plate boundaries, convergent, divergent, and transform. And you looked at different observable phenomena associated with each boundary type. Now, before we end this lesson, I'd like you to take a look at your plate boundary map and locate where you are on this map. Can you tell what plate boundaries are associated with the plate that is nearest to where you are? You can also use personal experiences such as, have you ever felt an earthquake where you live? Do you know of volcanoes near where you live? Do you have large mountains near where you are? Use this information to find out what types of plate boundaries are nearest to you. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson and thank you for your attention. Goodbye. Hi, thanks for checking out this video. My name is Solmaz Mohajer and I'm from the University of Tübingen in Germany. Now, this lesson focuses on plate boundaries. Your students don't need to know anything about plate boundaries because the main purpose of this lesson is for your students to observe, describe, and classify scientific information. And by doing that, they are going to discover what plate boundaries are. It would be useful for your students to be familiar with the terms such as earthquakes, volcanoes, topography, 
and geochronology, particularly the last one. Most students don't know what it is, so make sure you take a few minutes to describe what geochronology is and what geochronologists do. For this lesson, all you need are different types of maps. What I usually recommend is to print out these maps in large format and place them in four different parts of the classrooms. For instance, you can place the earthquake map at one corner of the classroom, the volcano map at another corner, the topography or elevation map at another, and then the geochronology map at another corner. This way students can spread and different groups can gather around the map to take a look at it. This will also mean that you will only print four large maps. One more thing that your students are going to need is a plate boundary map. Make sure that you print out two plate boundary maps per student. Even though your students are going to work in groups, each one of them is going to have their own plate boundary map. They're going to put their classification of plate boundary types behind their map and use colored pencils to color their plate boundary map. At the end of each day or each activity, you may like to collect these maps and take a look at them to see how your students have done and give them some feedback. What I also suggest to you is to avoid using scientific terminologies associated with plate boundary types, such as divergent, convergent, and transform boundary types. You can use these terms at the very end of the lesson when your students have had plenty of time to look at different types of plate boundaries and discover them on their own. In the first activity, you're going to break your students into four different groups. Each group is going to be given a map. For instance, group one is going to focus on the distribution of elevation globally. That would be your geography map. Your group two is going to look at the distribution of earthquakes around the globe. That would be your earthquake or seismology map. Your group three is going to focus on the distribution of volcanoes around the world. This will be your volcanology group. You are going to give them the volcanology map. It will look like this. And your last group is going to focus on the age of the ocean floor. This will be your geochronology map. As part of the first activity, each group is only going to look at their own map. For instance, the geography group does not know much about the distribution of volcanoes, earthquakes, or the age of the ocean floor. They only focus on their geography map. I encourage your students, when first time they take a look at their maps, to look at the legend and make sure that they understand what the legend says. Encourage them to observe what is happening on their map without describing them. I suggest that as a teacher, you walk around going from one group to another, making sure that the students are talking and that they're observing. If you notice that they're confused about something, you can help them by asking questions or guiding them in the right direction. When students are only observing their maps, it's important that they look at their scientific data or information globally. They're not focused on one particular region in the world, but they're looking at the entire Earth. Now, once students have had a chance to observe, classify, and describe their data globally, you're going to help them focus and narrow down their observation on one plate. One way to do this is to give each group a name of a plate. You can choose the name of the plate for each group, or you can have your students select a plate. Then your students are going to take a look at all different types of data associated with that one plate in the activity where students from different groups are coming together to form new groups and they're giving a plate name to zoom in and focus on, it's very important that you give students enough time to talk about their own data and what they have observed on their own map to the rest of the students in their group. One way to do that is to have students from different groups gather around one map so we have seismologists, volcanologists, geochronologists, and geographers gather around, for instance, the earthquake map. In this case, the seismologist, this is the person who is familiar with the earthquakes, is going to give everybody else in the group a brief presentation of what they have found out as seismologists looking at this map. Then this group can move to the next map. For instance, this could be the volcanology map. 
And the person from the volcanology group is going to give a presentation to the rest of the group about what they have found out on their volcano map. Similarly, for the remaining maps, students will do the same. When your students are coming with different classification schemes for their plate boundary types, make sure that they have access to colored pencils and give them lots of freedom in terms of what color they want to choose or what symbols they're going to use to differentiate these boundary types. At the very end of the lesson, this is the time for you to introduce scientific terminology for plate boundary types. As you can see behind me, we chose to draw these boundary types on the blackboard. If you have an image or a slide that shows these plate boundary types in better ways, feel free to use those. Explain each boundary type and the observable phenomena associated with it. What I generally recommend for this lesson is to give this lesson over three 50-minute periods. This could be done in one day or three different days. This way you give students a lot of time to take a look at what they see on the maps, to digest the information, and to be able to use that information to come up with classification schemes. This also allows your students to practice their presentation skills by preparing a one to two minute presentation about their plate boundary types. I think that's all. If you have any questions or if you're unsure about something, please feel free to contact us or check the resources listed on the information page for this video. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Thank you and goodbye.